Hello. Hey there. How's it going everybody? And I'm going to do a origami vlog video. Showing you exactly what I do, what I use and a lot of good stuff. So let's get right on it. First of all, I'm going to show you um, the paper I use, all the different types I have, and give you some wee tips on how to use them. So, start over here. Move this mold out of the way, show you at last. This paper is, I have no idea what it's called. I've, it's got like a furry texture to it that you could use for animals. Um, I've had it for a while now, years, and I haven't used it once. I really wouldn't know how to use this. It's quite loose. I haven't tried it, so yeah. That's that. Um, this one is a uh, Lopta, Lopta paper, uh, forty centimeter square. This one, green obviously. Um, I've only used it once, but I actually don't like it to be honest. Doesn't hold the crease as well. It looks it looks fluffy when you start to shape it. it like if you're doing an insect with this, and you shape the leg really thin. They'll look really fluffy on the outside, if you know what I mean yet, but that's just me. I'm not a fan of Lopta. Um, Craft Alios paper, or is that how you see it? Yep. Um, super thin, really flexible, it slides really well. Um, I only use this for test folds mainly, nothing, nothing important for it. That, that's the only reason I use it is for test folds. Now you can hear that. Got a like a metallic sound to it, sort of crisp. It takes the crease well. Real good for test folds. That's what I would use it for. Um, now we have the Thai Unrayu or Unrayu or however you pronounce it. Paper. Um, like again, I never use this as it's just flimsy and weak. Um, obviously, you can. Use MC on this or some sort of wallpaper paste, but obviously I haven't got any, so I can't use it at the moment. But I was thinking of doing a giveaway, origami giveaway video, and giving away all this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I'll see what you guys think in the comments. Right, next is elephant hide paper. Elephant hide, super thick. Really good for tessellations, which is this, and um, it's a open back hexagon twist. This is a pretty, diff pretty difficult model. It just looks so awesome from that angle. Look how cool it looks! Oh yeah, make love to this. You know, hold up to the light; it looks even better. Yeah, so. That's elephant hide. And also I've got larger larger sheets under it. I use this paper for um, a T-Rex skeleton. And it's perfect for it. Obviously I've cut out most of it for it. That's just what I've got left. A lot of scraps, so yeah. Next is just simple copy paper or test paper. Nothing special about this, just I've got it for using test folds. But that was years ago and I've never used it ever since. I just I just lies there and collects dust. But yeah. And it doesn't come square, just to let you know. It says it does but it doesn't. Yeah. Next tissue foil from the origami shop. This isn't this is not homemade. Obviously I don't know how to make that. But this is what I first used when I started out in origami. Pretty good paper, but it has, it has its limits to what you can do with it. I wouldn't recommend insects with this, because it just gets way too thick in the legs, or the body, or the whole of it. Um, use it on models that
So, like I said, just use this paper for models that are basically hollow or that don't don't build up a lot of layers, which is good for this paper. It's just incredible, absolutely amazing. As a shadow fold paper, or in other words, a a resistant paper, I think that's what it's called, or oh, that's how you pronounce it. Just spot on paper, amazing. Really, 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 really good. I recommend you get this. If you hear that, up. Oh. It's sort of. It's crisp, right? Just perfect, perfect paper. Next. We have glassoline. I've never used this before, I've only got two sheets of it. Super thin, look. you can see through it. Did you hear it? Very crisp. Um, I've ne like I said, I've never used it before. I ordered two of these for Ermacov's mantis shrimp, but obviously I've done it with bog paper. But I was going to use this, but once it came, I don't think it'd be a good choice. It does seem tricky to use. Yep. Let's move this out of the way. Next. Tant paper. The only thing this is good for is tessellations, is what I would recommend. And that is really thick paper. You hear that? It does hold the crease really well. Um, yeah, but like I said, only tessellations is what I would use, a, use this for. Alright, last but not least, Vogue or crumpled paper. This is all the Vogue I've got, which is just money's worth, money's worth. The best paper you can ever buy. Screw or a middle paper, who wants to pay £14 for one sheet? We can get one sheet for about three pounds. That's including packaging. Just amazing. I would recommend you get this. And obviously, I'm going to show you some models that I folded with this. Um, this is what I only use, basically. Out of all this paper, this is the stuff I, I, I use the most. Yeah, I'd recommend you get this. Trust me. Look at this. Purple, light green, light blue, and this. It only had this type in stock. They had it in red as well, but it only had in stock for a few days, then it sold out. Yeah, trust me, it's incredible paper. I recommend you get this. Right, that's part part two of this video. Is going to be what I use, the equipment I've got. I used to like, cut my screws or pegs or paint or glue, whatever. Right, so first of all, I cut and mat. So you can see that a double sided cutting mat. It's a self healing cutting mat. I don't know why it's called that. It doesn't exactly heal itself if you cut it. Um, pretty good. You can get it off Amazon for um, four pound. Yeah, that's including packaging. So. I recommend you getting this, it's perfect. For rollers, just got a stainless steel 64cm on. Also I use this most for measuring marks. If I'm using a, a large sheet of paper and I need to do a, like if this is my paper, this mat, I need to do a massive fold down here. I'll measure this distance and make sure it's the same way this distance, so I know that line's going to be absolutely spot on. That's mainly what I use that for. Yeah. And also, this ruler, uh, a right angle one, I can't remember the name of this one. Yeah. Is that, no. Silver lines, whatever it says. Um, I only use this for cutting paper, which is, if I can pick it up, swap hands. Yeah. Perfect roll for cutting paper. I recommend you getting one of these. Yeah, definitely. So, 
that's the rollers done. What I used to cut the paper. I used to use this. This is what I used to use at first. Obviously, you would put the roller on and cut down like that. But when you start to cut the paper, they can rip. I've done, it, I've done it a lot of times, and it's, I've wasted a lot of sheets doing this. You you start it off, but it rips at the corner and just tears it tears it inside when you can't see it. But no, I definitely would not recommend using this. I'd recommend you using this. A rotary cutter. It's just perfect. Ever since I used this, no no rips, no problems. Simply just push down. That's how easy it cuts. Then you need to stop, lift up, push the card up. I recommend you getting one of those. They're worth the money. Right, pegs. Just got these wee pegs. They're just amazing to use. Perfect. Obviously if you need to peg, if you're going on mud or whatever, you need to peg at a lot of places. A lot of small places. Yep, whoops. Just use these. You know, if I need to round the insect leg, I can clamp the whole leg with these pegs. So I'd recommend you getting those. I'll get the name of them. I can't remember at the moment. So, obviously, I've got bigger pegs. If I need to thin down a body of an insect or whatever, whatever it may be, just clamp a lot of them on and Squeeze the top for extra pressure and shrink the, the layers on. That's the end there. A um, pair of tweezers, basically used for intricate work or pulling out layers or shaping, which I'll show you later in the models. So they're always handy when you need them. Another metal roller, I've got two of them here. Just for major marks or references. Yep. Right. Paint brushes. Just an assortment of paint brushes. Some thick, some wide, some thin to get in nooks and crannies when you're painting. Obviously, I've got a large one if I want to paint a massive sheet. So, if you're Paint your origami, I recommend getting these. Right, so paints, just some normal acrylic paint. Obviously, all these here, all these ones are acrylic, and these ones are metallic, which are, are shiny. They give a shiny effect, but they're really thin and, and need about four coats of this to cover the original colours of paper, if you know what I mean. Obviously, I want to get certain colours here. If I want to make a light purple, I haven't got one. There's no, there's no light here or light there, I just need to add some white to it. And there you go, light purple. Saves you buying every single colour. Um, what glue I use is this. I use this glue in every model. That needs glue. Yeah, I'll try and get a good few. Weatherproof, tighten the tight bond to it's a wood glue. And how did I end up using this was because this is the only glue only glue I had I had at the start. So yeah. This is perfect this glue. And it's white so you don't you don't see it in any models. Right. Part two done. And here is the final part. We're just going to show you some models that I've done with Vogue paper. So I'll show you this one. That's the Loggerhead Sea Turtle by Satoshi Kimura. Um, and I finished this last night actually, about midnight. I was up all night doing this. Also, I use the tweezers here. Look like how tiny that is compared to my finger. Just to pull out the layers for the eyes. Yep. This is how good you can get with Vogue, if you know how to use it good. And the underbelly, see it's got that curved natural look. 
I think it's curved off, should it be puffed out? I'm not sure. I need to look it up, but really good paper, trust me. You get your money's worth out of this. Next, we have Lang Stag Beetle. And if you remember in my previous video, when folding this, it was white. It was white paper, white Vogue. Um, it's painted. Painted, that's how it looks. Just to show you it's in detail. Obviously, it looks much better. I just can't get the right light to show you it or hold it up. Is that any better? Yeah. Obviously, it takes time to try and paint all. Obviously, I've missed a few wee gaps, but that doesn't matter. I've got a minute left in this camera, so quickly. Lang's Cockroach from the crease pattern, first ever crease pattern. Um, Vogue paper again, 15 centimetres. Absolutely tiny, look at the size of it. Just, just fits my finger. And just throw some detail. Obviously, it's been painted as well. Yep. And we have a giant grouper. Obviously, it's a fish. It was red Vogue originally. Obviously, I painted it in like a, a greyish black. Then done gold dots over it. Then some silver ones. Yeah, it's a fun model to fold. Really tricky, so yeah. From 30 centimetres. And last, Shuki Kato's Titan Beetle from Orange Vogue and um, painted with the metallic metallic gold I've done about two coats two coats on it um, yeah also I missed a few spots but alright that's it I hope this video helped you out and if you if you need any more help just let me know in the comments and I'll answer them for you as best I can